On this episode of Mapping It, we spend nine days traveling around Central Europe. We visit four very different cities and spend our time uncovering the history, culture, and food that make these places unique. We start our trip in Budapest, then head to Vienna for several days. We take a quick day trip to Bratislava and end our trip in Prague. We visit historic sites, spend evenings at world-class performances of opera and ballet, and eat as many local foods as we can get our hands on. And of course, we spend a lot of time at some of the best Christmas markets in the world. We're so excited to share it with you, so stick around. We're off on our next adventure. We're heading to Budapest this time. This is Greta, she's my sister, and we're all going to Budapest together. Well, we just landed in Budapest. Now we got to figure out the bus to the middle of the city. Let's go find the bus. Yeah. Well, we made it to our Airbnb. The bus was pretty easy once we figured out how the app worked. Uh, but you do need a cellular connection. Or if you don't have one of those, you can buy a ticket from the machine. Welcome to our Airbnb in Budapest. Yeah. <laughs> now this has got to be the fanciest kitchen that I've ever seen that we will never attain in our lifetime. Probably a microwave and oven combo here. Oh, the fridge? Is this the fridge? Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> and hidden, the freezer down hidden below. Hidden fridge and freezer. We got ice. <gasps> we got ice? <laughs> <laughs> nice stove top that we're probably not going to utilize. Coffee. <laughs> yeah, we got coffee, a coffee maker. Greta will take advantage of that. Nice big living room over here with the TV. Mm. Nice hangout space. There's a bit of a patio deck thing. <laughs> Can't see much right now. <laughs> One of the bedrooms. Looks like we've got a sliding door here to close it off from the living room. A little bit of privacy. Bit of a view of a square. Nice square view. And a Marriott. Mm. <laughs> nice long hallway. With oh, some good. closet space, <laughs> nice big bathroom. Mm. Spacious. <laughs> Just a small bathroom here, half bath. Ah, tiny little thing. Another bedroom with two beds in it. Mm. And an attached bathroom. Wow. Then the other bathroom here. Ah. What are you looking at? Got a map. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Very detailed. Now that we've got some light, let's check out the view. I think we're coming up to something. <laughs> I see Christmas market stalls. Woohoo! I see a tree. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got our first food at our first Christmas market in Europe. We got some traditional langosh. It's uh, kind of like a fry bread and it's got some sour cream and cheese on top. Looks like it's going to be messy. Yeah. Let's see if we can figure this out. Oh my gosh. New York pizza style. No. <laughs> mm. Yeah? No. Oh. What's it taste like? It's so fluffy. It's like eating a cloud. Eating a cloud. <laughs> oh, it kind of tastes like your traditional fry bread, but it's actually really soft and fluffy as opposed to maybe a little crispy. Ooh. Sour cream, obviously, if you like that. And I didn't get much cheese, but I'm sure that's good too. <laughs> a little soggy. Well, I guess the plate's a little soggy, huh? You like it? <laughs> This is pretty good for our first food in Hungary. Langosh, I think, was a good choice. We paid 2,800 forint for it. <laughs> Any idea what that is in the US? Maybe $7. Okay. It's pretty big, but. It is big. We'll double check that conversion. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good, though. <laughs> I like it. So we got a thing. I don't remember what it's called. Do you know what's inside it? I think it's like a meringue. Okay. Kind of like a chocolate covered meringue. Ah. So. We're 
looks pretty big. I don't know how to eat this. <laughs> oh, oh no. That's not how I would have suggested it. It's like a very soft cream. It's a lot softer than I thought it was going to so be. So is it a marshmallow? Kind of, yeah. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Oh man. I'm a fan. <laughs> I like, I like fluffy things. I like chocolate things. I like this combo. It's very good. <laughs> I spent some money. It's going fast. It is going fast. I got a cookie stamp. Traditional, this is, she said this was a traditional pattern. She gave me a recipe as well. She said that if I wanted to add poppy seeds or walnuts for the recipe, I'd grind them up and add 100 grams. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. It was only seven euros. Okay, so we got something. <laughs> we got a thing. It's like a sausage wrapped in a tortilla. But there's like a lot of edge tortilla right up here, so I'm gonna dig in. <laughs> Ridiculous. You're a crazy person. Mm. Wow. Looks juicy. Mm. Paprika. Nice. Got a bit of spice to it. It's very good. Would you get it with the bread again or would you get it some other way? I'd maybe not. <laughs> Skip the bread. Skip the bread. You can also get it like hot dog style. Ooh, that was hot. <laughs> yeah, in a regular bun, kind of. Yeah, you can get it with a regular bun. You can get it au naturel. <laughs> we should maybe try that one next time. <laughs> How do you like it? It's good. Would you buy it again? Probably, but maybe not in this form. Yeah. I'd maybe try it without bread. It's good though. Yeah. I think there's even cheese in there. <laughs> You look very wet. I am very wet. You know, you remind me of, uh, what is it, Darth Helmet from <laughs> Spaceballs. Like, <laughs> like. <laughs> What'd you get, Greta? I don't even know what it's called. Like a chimney cake. I don't know the Hungarian name. <laughs> what flavor? Cinnamon. How is it? Oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> Big piece. It looks warm. It's warming my body. <laughs> How is it? Not as doughy as a cinnamon roll. Okay. But like, same idea. Same, same concept. <laughs> We had to come back and take shelter from the rain. It was getting kind of intense. Yeah, you couldn't last too long out there. No, I'm honestly surprised we uh, lasted as long as we did. Uh, I think we were out for maybe two hours. -ish. Hour and a half to two hours, something yeah, like that. something like that. <laughs> and we got totally soaked. Yeah. Uh, and so we're gonna stay inside and warm up. And it's been a long travel day for us, so. Gotta get some rest because we got a lot planned. <laughs> and hoping for some better weather tomorrow and Sunday. <laughs> yeah, let's hope so. We have two days in Budapest, so we want to make the most of it. Good morning. It's not bright and early. <laughs> I mean, for us anyways. It's around 8 a.m. ish. And we have just bought tickets for the Metro on our phones. And now we're heading out for the day. Hopefully they work. Yeah, we're going to explore uh, Matthias Church and maybe Fisherman's Bastion because they're right next to each other on the Buddha side of the river. So let's go. It's currently not supposed to rain tomorrow. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's exciting. <laughs> We took the M2 line to the Buddha side of the river and it took us 115 feet underground. The line was built during the communist days and was designed to double as a bomb shelter. We made it to Matthias Church, or Matthias Church. <laughs> Not sure how to pronounce it, but it is incredible. Let's go check it out. 
This church was named after Matthias Corvinus, one of the most beloved kings of Hungary. Corvinus means raven, and you can see a raven holding a golden ring up on the top of the spire there. Do you know anything about this church? No, I know nothing. You lie. <laughs> <laughs> the steeple was built for the 1896 um, century anniversary. A church has stood on this spot for over 800 years. The current church was built in the 1200s and was renovated in the late 1800s and again restored after World War II. The raven holding the ring is the symbol of Matthias Corvinus and we'll see it throughout the church. You can see it behind me on the wall. This is, this is his uh, shield, coat of arms. This is his coat of arms, whatever it is. And the, um, the men on either side are um, representations of his army. Inside this church is the oldest surviving stone carving in Budapest, dating back to around 1260 when this church was built. The church has had many roles over the centuries. During the Ottoman Empire, the church was used as a mosque, and during the days of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, this church was the location where Franz Joseph was crowned King of Hungary. Walking around the inside of the church, you're able to see many different layers of its history. Behind me is a statue of um, Empress Sissi of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and in Austria she is Empress, but in Hungary she is Queen. So we paid about 2,100 florins to get into the church per person. I think that was pretty worth it. It's got a cool inside, so definitely worth it to pay that much. We spent some time walking around Fisherman's Bastion and enjoying the views. In winter when the days are shorter and sunrise is later, it's hard to beat the crowds. But if you visit in summer, we recommend coming very early in the morning to enjoy the views before all the tour groups start their day. Now we are off to find lunch. We're gonna try and make it to the Central Market Hall and see if we can find something good. So let's go. Public transit in Budapest is very easy to use. We downloaded the Budapest Go app on our phones and could easily buy tickets or day passes to use. Be sure to validate your tickets before you get on by scanning the QR code. Also, we used Google Maps to help navigate and it worked really well. Well, we made it to the Central Market Hall. Let's go inside and check it out. So I think we'll see this when we're walking around, but the main floor of the Central Market Hall has a lot of like food stands and stuff. So you get your meat, your cheese, your vegetables, all that good stuff. And then the upstairs has more restaurants and souvenirs and gifts and that sort of thing. So we're gonna try and see what we can find. The Great Market Hall has something for everyone. There's plenty of cheese, cakes and desserts, and of course, tons of paprika on the main level. Around Christmas time, you can also find lots of specialty chocolates and festive holiday treats. On the upper level, you'll find souvenir stands and a handful of restaurants that can get very crowded during lunchtime. Well, it's pretty chaotic in here. And it's definitely like in the middle of lunchtime and it's just insane. But <laughs> we got some food. What'd you get? We got some goulash with some uh, kind of spatzel like pasta. Mm. That's good. It's well cooked. Good spices. Paprika. And some onion too. I think it's pork. Mm. Mm. Goulash. Potato. We've got some shots of Unicum here, which is a very popular spirit in Hungary. It's supposed to be a little bitter. It's, <laughs> it smells strong. Yeah, we'll see. Wow, <laughs> that's strong. <laughs> I'm glad I went with the small. That's really bitter. Very bitter. <laughs> it wasn't bad at first, but then it hit me. Like, <laughs> holy cow. I think that's a, a strong pass for me. <laughs> Maybe not. I mean, I'm glad I did it, but... I still have that flavor of unicum in my mouth, but I'm going to try and wash it down with some stuffed cabbage. This looks really good. Looks like we got some sour cream here. 
some additional cabbage and then the stuffed cabbage. So let's see what we got. Oh wow, look at that. Ooh. I think it's like pork and rice. Pork and rice and tomato sauce. Paprika, perhaps. Steaming. Mm. That's really good. I think I think everything would be improved with a little bit of the sour cream, but overall, very good. I think your goulash was better though. We got the goods. We got a ton of candy and some paprika. <laughs> so let's get out of here. Yeah, let's get out. We got some desserts from the Central Market. We don't quite know what we have. <laughs> I've, re I've seen this before and I've read good things about it, but I don't remember the name of it. It's layers of cake with like a buttercream frosting. And then this is like supposed to be caramel on top. So I've heard good things about that. I think it's a traditional Hungarian cake. And then here, I don't really know what this is. <laughs> I think it said marzipan. Yeah. Is it really soft? It's soft. <laughs> uh, whoa. Look wow. at that. That looks good. Wow, that's, that's very good. It's not too sweet. So we figured out the name of this traditional Hungarian cake. It's Dobos Torta. So let's try it out. It's got... That's a big bite. Yeah, we'll, we'll see if we can do it. <laughs> if you're under if the I, plate. Yeah. There we go. Mm. Crunchy. Yeah, topping's got some crunch to it. Good chocolate frosting. It's a good... Seven or eight out of ten. It's candy trend time. <laughs> so we're gonna try that Balatone. It's kind of like a wafer, chocolate wafer. Hmm. Just a regular kind of chocolate wafer. Tastes very, very similar to stuff we have in the U.S. It's good though. Next, <laughs> next one is a candy by Potjosh. <laughs> what was the flavor? Caramel. Oh, yeah, it's kind of got like a like a cream cheese filling, I guess. It's very sweet. <laughs> I wouldn't. I don't think I'd want to eat a whole bar of this myself. Okay. I just wanted to try it. Cause it's not bad. Oh, yeah. It's very cream cheesy. Mm. So this is a hazelnut. I think caramel's better. <laughs> I don't know. I'd give it like a three. We're doing something fun tonight. <laughs> we have tickets to the the Nutcracker Ballet <laughs> at the Hungarian State Opera House. Should be fun. So it should be really magnificent inside. We're looking forward to it. We'll take you with us. King of Hungary Franz Joseph provided half of the money needed to build the Hungarian State Opera House on the condition that it wouldn't be larger than his home opera house in Vienna. True to their word, the Hungarians agreed and built a smaller opera house, but made it incredibly extravagant on the inside, and today it's known as one of Europe's finest opera houses. Well, we've made it to the opera house, and this place is incredible. Very so nice. Red and gold. And the ceiling is just magnificent. The chandelier is so massive. I think we've got a pretty nice view, and we can even see the orchestra too. We bought our tickets to the ballet several months in advance and seats for performances during the holidays were already starting to sell out in August. We chose tickets for a private box and although there were only three of us, we had to buy all four seats in the box, but we really enjoyed having box seats, so it was worth it. <laughs> what else do you get? Got some opera cakes. Wow. It even says opera on it. Fancy. <laughs> How was the intermission? 
it was good. It went pretty smooth. We got into the line pretty early on. Um, but one tip is that you can reserve a table and food and drinks ahead of time. We packed fancy clothes to dress up for the occasion. Jeremy wore a jacket, dress pants, and dress shoes, and I wore a dress with nice shoes. We're very glad we made the effort to dress up because everyone else was dressed really nicely too. We had a great time at the ballet and highly recommend going to performance if you get a chance. We just finished up at the ballet. Oh, it was wonderful. It's a little bit ringy. So I'm glad I'm wearing my raincoat. <laughs> and we're heading back to the apartment. Maybe there will be a detour. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> it's a little rainy and wet, so we'll see. A great time at the Nutcracker Ballet and even though the weather was a little bit rainy we still made it to the Forest Schmarty uh, Christmas Market and we walked down Fashion Street which was all lit up with lights so that was very cool. Probably spent a little bit too much money on souvenirs. <laughs> uh, looking forward to our activities tomorrow. We'll see you then. We're heading to the Parliament building area. We're gonna start by going across the river to see it from that angle and then we have a tour after that. Yeah, a German tour because <laughs> we didn't sign up in time. <laughs> All the English audio guide tours were sold out, so we picked German. We got to Bet Betiani Ter um, to see views of the Parliament building, but there's a car park in our way. Yeah, they put cars in front of the viewpoint. And there's a bit of a barrier. <laughs> so we are walking to the end of the barrier where we think there are stairs to get down there to get a better view of Parliament. We're across the Danube from the Parliament building. It was built for the 1896 thousand year anniversary of Hungary. But it wasn't completed until 1902. And this was built during the Austro-Hungarian Empire. And so this building is massive because it's intended to govern the entire Austro-Hungarian Empire. Yeah. So that's why it's super huge. Let's go check it out. The Hungarian Parliament building sits on the edge of the Danube. The architecture is a mix of multiple styles that are blended really well together. The main part of the building is Neo-Gothic and it's topped with a Neo-Renaissance dome. Welcome to Parliament! <laughs> tickets for a tour of Parliament usually sell out, so book your tickets well in advance. If you miss out on your chosen language like we did, you can book a tour in another language. We really didn't want to miss out on visiting Parliament, so we booked a German tour and lots of other people did the same thing. In our experience, the audio tour was a pre-recorded tape that you listen to as you're escorted through the building. There wasn't a guide speaking directly to us, but your experience may be different. One of the most impressive stops on the tour is the Grand Staircase. It has 96 steps, symbolic of the year 1896, the year that celebrates 1,000 years of Hungarian history. This entryway is covered in gold foil, stained glass windows, and beautiful frescoes, perfectly fitting for the rulers of one of Europe's most successful empires. The Hungarian crown is kept in Parliament under the dome. The dome is 96 meters tall, another tie to the Millennium Celebration. You're not allowed to take photos of the crown, so we can't show you what the area looks like, but trust us when we say it's impressive. One more very impressive room on the tour is the legislative chamber. The building actually has two symmetrical halls on either side, designed to hold a massive legislature intended to govern the Austro-Hungarian Empire. These days, only one chamber is needed to govern Hungary, and the other is used for special events and guided tours. When Hungary was under communist leadership, this star was on top of Parliament. It's a big star. Well, we just wrapped up our tour of Parliament. 
our German yeah. audio guide tour. It was cool to see. It was really cool to see the architecture. We knew a little bit going into it, like the history of the building and yeah. stuff. About half the people didn't speak German on that tour group. So yeah, for you could, sure. You could tell people had taken their audio guides out and <laughs> were, were speaking other languages. Yeah. <laughs> After the tour, there's a really cool, interesting museum at the end of it. And it has translations in English, so you can understand it. And you'll learn a little bit of the history of the building. So that's kind of cool. And now we're headed to find some lunch. So let's see what we can find. We're at the street food caravan. We're getting some lunch here. We got a bread bowl filled with paprika chicken. So let's see what we got. Ah. Looks good. It does look good. Oh, well, you might need a knife. Yeah, let's see how this. It's a whole chicken. It is a whole piece of chicken. Okay, I got some. Wow, that is so good. The chicken is tender, not overdone. And it's very, it's very paprika-y, but it's not like overwhelming and it's not spicy. It's just warming and it's very rich and like hearty. Perfect on a cold winter day. I love it. Mmm. Oh wow. What do you think? That's amazing. Yeah. It's so creamy. That paprika flavor is just incredible. So I got a very traditional Hungarian dish, a Korean barbecue fried chicken sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> it looks amazing though. Mm, that's good. Freshly fried chicken. I got chicken thighs instead of chicken breast. The flavor is really good. What'd you get? A cheese paquito. How is it? It's good. Is it very cheesy? This is too much cheese, yeah. <laughs> it looks pretty good though. After lunch, we met up with Judith to spend the afternoon at Memento Park. Memento Park is located outside the city center and you can reach it using public transportation. Or if you're interested in immersing yourself in the past, you can arrange to be picked up in a vintage Trabant. The car we rode in was over 40 years old and was very popular in countries in Central Europe under communist rule. Riding in a Trabant is a very unique experience and something we will remember for a long time. We're at Memento Park to see some old communist statues. Memento Park is filled with old communist statues that were collected after the fall of communism. Hungary used to be part of the Eastern Bloc and was under communist control for decades. When communism fell in 1989, many statues were torn down or removed and later gathered here. There are statues of the major communist leaders, but there are also statues depicting socialist realist art and ideals. Throughout our tour, Judith explained the symbolism we were seeing and the history and struggles behind its meaning. You can see that he's even taller and he's stepping out of this greeting. Meanwhile, the Hungarian worker is pretty much approaching. In the course of the fall of communism, many of these statues got badly vandalized. In addition to the statues, the park is filled with symbolism and how it's designed. There's one long road in the center representing the road to communism, but notably it leads to a dead end and a wall that symbolizes the frustrations with a life under communist rule. We are currently standing in near the end of Memento Park on the road to communism. That's what this whole central road is. And yay. Yes. <laughs> as you can see, it has a dead end because the way communism has been implemented always leads to a dead end for the people, the economy. The way to solve it is to turn around like we have and you are now led on a path to democracy. Once you've turned around and are headed towards democracy, there's still uncertainty. As you look ahead in the path, you see the boots of your leader, but their face is obscured. You can't tell whether they will lead you towards a brighter future or down a path filled with more struggles. We just wrapped up our tour with Judith at Memento Park. She was filled with knowledge. She was very surprised at Jeremy. He got something correct. She had, a she had a bunch of photos and we were supposed to guess what these items were. And he knew that one of the items was for holding a bag of milk. <laughs> and she said that no one has ever guessed it right. But <laughs> that was very funny. 
and I thought it was a very interesting tour. Highly recommend going here. If you're interested in history of the Communist Party and checking out the statues that used to be all around the region as well, they wanted to gather them all here as a way to memorialize the statues, but from an apolitical standpoint so that anyone can come and learn about this. And you don't even need a guide to come here. You can just come and get your own impressions of what these statues mean to you. So that's kind of cool. How you doing? I'm really cold. It's cold today. So if you do come in winter, wear lots of layers. It's very windy and it's snowing today, but they have coffee and tea to warm you up. So that's nice. We're gonna go stand in Stalin's shoes now. So let's check that out. <laughs> We are standing on top of the grandstand. We are below Stalin's boots. They are directly above us. And this was originally a gift for Stalin. And then they tore down his statue and all that was remaining was the boot. They felt that it was a fitting symbol so they decided not to replicate the entire statue and just have the boots here. The square that we're standing in right now is uh, right near the Stalin's grandstand statue feet thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And so this area kind of memorializes anyone who is under totalitarian rule, either in the past or in the current state of things. So. Yeah, this park acknowledges that communism and totalitarian regimes did not end in 1989 when the Berlin Wall fell. There are still people today who are suffering under totalitarian regimes. Visiting Memento Park was an interesting way to learn about Hungarian history from the perspective of a local, and we highly recommend going if you have the chance. We are currently on the Budapest Ferris Wheel and we can actually see this Ferris Wheel from the balcony in our Airbnb so it's cool to be on it now. We have a pretty incredible view of sunset on that side. And then we have a pretty cool view of the basilica on the other side too. Yeah. And oh, you can see Parliament yeah, you over can see there. The Parliament building. Uh, I'd say it was worth it. This, yeah. is a, this is fun. You happy? Yeah. We're not as cold as we were. No. After the Ferris wheel, we headed to St. Stephen's Basilica. St. Stephen's Basilica is Budapest's largest church, and it was built around the time of the millennial celebration in the late 1800s. The inside of the church is beautiful, but perhaps the best view is from the top of the dome overlooking Budapest. We are at St. Stephen's Basilica, and we are about to go to the observation point. Let's go. Tickets are affordable, and there's even an elevator that takes you part of the way up. We visited at dusk and enjoyed views of the Christmas market and Parliament all lit up. What do you guys think of the view? It's pretty. Yeah. yeah. It is nice. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Two and a half days, we finally have our first hot beverages. <laughs> I've had coffee. Well, okay, technically Greta's had coffee, but it doesn't count. Doesn't count. Christmas, be Christmas you get? beverages. You just have a hot beverage? What is it? Mm. I got hot chocolate, and it is incredible. <laughs> it's not bitter in any way. It's not overly sweet, but it's like a good, rich chocolate. Swiss Definitely not Swiss <laughs> Much higher quality than Swiss Miss. Dang. What'd you get, Greta? I got mulled wine. It's good. Is Spicy. It whiny? Yeah, it's whiny. <laughs> Jeremy got it. I'm gonna give it a taste. <laughs> that burned my throat. <laughs> my, my hand is burning. <laughs> Definitely take a light sip. The, the hot chocolate is a little more tempered than that, I'd okay. say. <laughs> We got a potato pancake, and we got it with tzatziki, because tzatziki is delicious. So, I don't see how the two could be like that. Crunchy, sounds good. First gonna try it plain. Yum yum. That's good. Tastes like potato. <laughs> <laughs> it does that, so at least there's that. It's very good. 
fruits. I think it's well seasoned and it's not really salty. I'm gonna try it with the tzatziki next. Not in Minnesota, for sure. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Better with tzatziki? It was already really good. Yeah. But that tzatziki <laughs> just takes it over the top. I'm a fan, for sure. 10 out of 10. Definitely yeah. buy this one. I got a giant hot dog. It's like a paprika spiced uh, sausage. Um, did you say it's spicy? Well, they have spicy mustard or sweet mustard, and this is the spicy version. Oh, great. So, a spicy brown mustard, <laughs> and it's got a slaw on it. Don't let the slaw fall. Your stomach's off. gonna love you. I, yeah, <laughs> I don't. We'll see how this goes. That's very good. Very well seasoned. You can taste the paprika. I got a good amount of mustard in that. <laughs> yeah, it looked very mustardy. This is gonna be a lot of work. I would recommend this. For sure. <laughs> this is a good dinner so far, I'd yeah. say. I think we just have to go and find maybe some more hot drinks after this because my fingers are getting cold. We are Minnesotans, born and raised. We are familiar with cold temperatures, <laughs> like negative below zero Fahrenheit temperatures. So that's saying something. And we're pretty cold here. <laughs> it's not like we're from Florida or Tennessee or somewhere in the south that maybe the temperatures don't get very cold. We're from Minnesota, we're hardy people, and we are still freezing. <laughs> Bundle up. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh. Got a apple cider hot wine. That's nice. I still like the hot chocolate better, but this is still pretty good. How is it compared to the red wine? The one that scalded my mouth? <laughs> I mean, okay, so this is an apple cinnamon white wine. Very nice. I like this a lot. What'd you get? Hot chocolate. With? Rum and whipped cream. <laughs> Good That's rummy. It's rummy. That is thick hot chocolate. It's rum. Tastes like rum though. Yeah. <laughs> is it an improvement? I mean, it's probably better plain, but it'll warm you up, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Kartos Kolacha chimney cake is a treat originally from Hungary and Romania but has become very popular around Europe and you'll often find it at Christmas markets all across the continent. It's made by wrapping dough around a spit and roasting it. When it's done, it resembles a chimney with steam. What you got? I got a Kartos Kolacha, which is a chimney cake. And we got it uh, in a cinnamon sugar flavor. And it's very long, as you can see, it's like more than a foot. Yeah. And it's fresh off of the, the spinning wheel. Yeah, it's really chimney. -ing. Yeah, it's really, it's really chimney. -ing. <laughs> I guess I'll give it a shot though. Oh! Hot? <laughs> I mean, like, very warm, but harder than I thought. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Hot, hot, hot. That's really good. It's like, oh, look at this. Ooh, look at that. And the inside, it's like, it's super soft. Crunchy on the outside. Soft and pillowy on the inside. Perfect combination of cinnamon and sugar. Very good. Well, today has been a fun, long day. Very long, day. and we didn't take a break at all. Yeah, no breaks. So We wrapped up at the Christmas market. We were getting a little cold, so we walked back to our apartment, and yep. we're gonna call it a night. And tomorrow we're heading to Vienna. So stick around. Good morning, friends. We have a train to catch later this morning, 
but we are maybe doing something a little chaotic. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to the Sacheni Thermal Baths. Hopefully we have time to do this. <laughs> I think we have time, just I think hopefully everything goes well. Yeah, hopefully everything <laughs> goes well. Let's, uh, let's see if we can make this happen. We made it to the baths. We took the M1 Metro line. It was really pretty. Every station was like super old with the beautiful subway tiles and intricate hand-painted designs. Now we're here walking to the entrance of the thermal baths. Let's hope we're going to the right entrance. Yeah. And it's a chilly 27 degrees outside. <laughs> Hungary has a long history of thermal baths dating all the way back to the Roman Empire. There are over two dozen thermal baths in Budapest and they are actually part of the healthcare system. They're used by people wanting to relax, but they're also used for medicinal purposes. A doctor might prescribe treatments that include soaking in thermal baths of different temperatures or laps in the pool. Well, we made it to the thermal baths. We splurged for a cabin, and then we had to take showers before we got into the pool. And we had to walk through a lot of the indoor thermal pools to get to the outside. And now we're freezing. Now we're standing in the cold and we need to get in the hot water. Yeah, so we gotta hurry up and jump in. Let's go. Wow. That's nice. What do you think? Um, it's warm. So it, is, it is very warm. It is very warm. My hands are hot. It is definitely making up for the fact that it's 20, I don't know, 20, 28 degrees Fahrenheit? Yes. Outside? The, the outside temperature is 28 degrees Fahrenheit and the pool temperature is 28 degrees Celsius. <laughs> so it's quite the difference. Quite the difference. The Seicheni baths are huge with many options both inside and out. Each bath is a different temperature and has different features so we recommend trying a few to see what you like. Our favorites were outside with incredible views. Well we changed pools. This one is a little less hot. But it's got some fun stuff. It's got like a little bubbly thing. Yeah, it's definitely not as comfortable. Warmth wise. Yeah, the other one is definitely the other one is definitely hotter. But this one has some fun things and we're gonna go explore it. It hurts. <laughs> we're in a current pool right now. Floating away. <laughs> this is a pretty cool spot. <laughs> Your glasses are getting I foggy. I keep getting fogged up because of the, the fountains that are nearby. <laughs> <laughs> but you like it? Yeah. Was it worth the early morning visit? I think so. <laughs> this is fun. You having fun? Yeah, I think I'll take a couple more laps around the, the whirlpool type thing. <laughs> and then we'll head to the hot pool and maybe go inside? I don't know. <laughs> We jumped into the hot pool again. It's very steamy over here. It is. I can barely see. <laughs> We're gonna soak for a bit and then probably jump out. <laughs> Why are you calling me over? Because we need to go. We've been in for two minutes too long. We're gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure the guys over there, the old the old men over there have been sitting in here longer than we have. Well, I think we're gonna die. We're gonna die. Yeah, That's what we're the gonna die. It's kind of decided. <laughs> We just finished up at the baths and we have a couple tips for you. Um, <laughs> save safety. time and not wait in line, buy your tickets online in advance. Also, if you have more than two people, it's probably a good idea to get multiple cabins or uh, lockers to change well, if you use those. Well, lockers are a given, but yeah. cabins are an upgrade and they're a pretty cheap upgrade. They're only a thousand dollars extra. No, excuse me. A thousand dollars? They're only a thousand foreign extra per cabin. <laughs> and so if you have a couple, more than two people, it's worth to get an extra cabin. It saves you some time getting ready when you're finished up. Yeah. Before you enter the bath, you should take a shower and you can bring your flip-flops or water shoes all the way to the pool so you don't have to walk around without like footwear on. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure Greta made a cameo back there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're gonna head back to the apartment. Yeah, we're gonna go get ready to take our train to Vienna. <laughs> We 
we're walking through City Park on our way back to the apartment, and we happened upon Viada Hunyad Castle, which was... <laughs> That's a tough one. I, I don't know if I got that right, but um, it was built in 1896 as part of the Millennial Celebration, and it's an imitation of a castle in Romania. It's just slightly disconcerting that you could just go right off the ice right there. <laughs> Well, we're done walking through City Park and now we are heading to Hero Square. It's just in front of us. Let's go. This is Hero Square. Like a lot of monuments, it was built for the Millennium Celebration. And it's got uh, statues of the seven chieftains of the Magyars as well as other Hungarian notable people. Hero Square has played a major role in contemporary events here in Budapest as well and more recently in 1989 this was the place where they did the reburial of a very important Hungarian figure at the end of communism. Hi Greta. Hi. What do you think of Hero Square? Uh, there's some big pillars. How was the last morning in Budapest? Good. Warm. For a little while. For a little while. Yeah. yeah. We've done a lot more than I thought we would. I know. Yeah, I agree. Should we uh, get ready to go? Yeah. Yeah, I think we should. All right. Let's get out. We made it to the train station, luckily. <laughs> Directions weren't great, but... <laughs> we figured it out. So, hopefully we can find our correct train. Let's go find a Christmas market. Our first one in Vienna. Woo! We made it to our first Vienna Christmas market. We are at the Maria Theresienplatz market. And I got my first little Christmas mug. So happy. <laughs> Yeah, we found some food. We got something that's like roasted potatoes with some sausage and a lot of delicious looking onions. There might be a little bit of bacon in there too. Looks good. Oh my gosh, this potato looks like heaven. Good stuff. That is, oh my gosh, that is so good. I can't even. It's like the most savory roasted umami flavor. This is so good, I can't, I'm not sharing. <laughs> <laughs> Next we got some Kesa Spetzla with uh, fried onions on top. Looks really good. Smells good too. Wow. Mm. Wow, so much flavor. Yeah. Like garlic and cheese and the onions are like perfectly crispy. That's so good. Nice and warm. So, first impressions of Vienna Christmas markets. 
it's magical. I mean, we've got snow going on right now. Yeah, the snow helps. <laughs> yes, and we are at the Maria Therese and Plotz Christmas Market. So it's sandwiched between two museums. And so that kind of just adds to the ambiance, I think. Yeah. Like the buildings are lit up, they are magical. All the Christmas dolls are here, they are magical. <laughs> I've got warm, hot chocolate. That's magical. <laughs> There's so much variety i think to things that you can buy here yeah and there's some really good food it's not there's not like not a whole lot of food not a whole lot of food. some good stuff there's some hidden gems here <laughs> and i think we found them yeah so far i am really liking vienna christmas markets yeah a lot more variety that feels like than budapest yes yes <laughs> um i think maybe we'll find a little bit of dessert and then we have to head back to the apartment because we have some plans tonight <laughs> Well, we got a big giant Nutella pretzel, and it's a little cold here, so we're gonna head back to our Airbnb and get warm. Well, we are back from the Christmas market, and as you can see, we're wearing new clothes. Well, you can't see mine. <laughs> we're getting bundled up. We're heading to the opera. <laughs> we are going to see Die Zauberflot, which is, uh, the Magic Flute, and and it's our first opera ever, so why not make it at the Vienna Opera House? That sounds kind of <laughs> yeah. kind of exciting. And this one was composed by Mozart, and it was premiered here in Vienna. So we're seeing it at the place where it premiered. How cool is that? We made a table reservation for intermission. Ooh! So we don't have to wait in line for food or drinks. We bought our tickets to the Vienna Opera several months in advance. Tickets aren't cheap, but you can save some money by sitting higher up and on the side. If you really want to save some money, you can wait in line to buy tickets for the standing section. We dressed up for the performance, but we saw some people that were very casually dressed. I have a fun fact about the opera here in Vienna. They do multiple shows at a time, so they have to have multiple sets on hand backstage. So the backstage is massive, absolutely massive, to house these huge sets. Also, in February, if you're here, you can come to the, the opera ball, and they take the whole entire floor out of the opera. Like, the seats are gone, it's all like removed, and it's just a, basically one big ballroom and it's a super formal event, like black tie mandatory. <laughs> Tickets are super expensive. We are not going to that. <laughs> well, that was a long opera. Yeah, very late. Yeah, so we're gonna call it a night. not as cold in Vienna today as it was yesterday. Not as windy at least. Yeah, definitely not as windy. And I think we're gonna try and go to Cafe Central in Vienna. We'll see how busy it is. Yeah, we'll <laughs> see if we make it. <laughs> Cafe Central opened in 1876 and over the years it's seen many Famous people pass through its doors, including Freud and Trotsky. So it's pretty cool that we got to eat there. We're at Cafe Central, and I got a hot chocolate, and I'm very excited about it. It's mit Schlag, which means with cream. I'm a fan. I'm a happy camper. I got uh, bacon and eggs. <laughs> Still looks good, though. <laughs> That's all yolk. <laughs> Good bacon though. Yeah. And I got the scrambled eggs with salmon and it looks incredible. Mmm. It's really good. The salmon isn't overly fishy. The eggs are really fluffy and pillowy. I love it. What'd you order? Got a melange. What is a melange? Uh, it's a typical drink in Vienna. I mean, 
If I like to coffee it, I think it looks good. <laughs> just froth milk there. So. Got a classic Viennese breakfast. Um, a soft boiled egg, a croissant, a handmade roll, and some jam. I love butter and jam. Do you like um, cheese and jam? Because I love cheese and jam. Like, say you have brie on a baguette with some like raspberry jam. Yes, I do. Oh like my god. Both. That's my favorite thing in the world. That does sound really good. <laughs> so one of our cakes has arrived. It's the nouscous. It's like a hazelnut cake with some hazelnut cream. Uh, I think it's even got nuts in it and some milk chocolate. Mm. Tastes very much like Nutella. It's crispy, it's soft, crunchy from the nuts, a lot of different textures. Very good. We just finished up at Cafe Central and a tip is to come early. We got here right around open and there was no line and we were seated right away. We didn't have a reservation. But now as you can see, it's almost 9.30 and the line is out the door and it only gets longer throughout the day. We're standing outside the Hofburg Palace right on Mikeller Platz. There's a Christmas market right behind us. And we're about to go inside and tour the Imperial Apartments and the Sisi Museum. Let's go check it out. Yeah. The Hofburg Palace holds hundreds of years of history, mainly centered around the Habsburg family, the rulers of the Austrian Empire for centuries. We visited the Imperial Apartments and the Sisi Museum. We're touring the Hofburg Palace and behind me is a set of Imperial Chamber Pots. <laughs> So it turns out they would only eat on gold or silver plates until the 19th century. How bougie. <laughs> There's almost no silver service that survives from older generations of the Austrian Empire because it all had to be melted down during the, during the Napoleon War. We just finished touring the Imperial Apartments and the Sissy Museum. They had a very informative audio guide, a very yeah, thorough audio very guide. Very thorough. <laughs> the building is super impressive. It's very cool to see. Yeah, we definitely recommend making a stop there. Some fun facts were that dinner was between 9 and 13 courses and only took a maximum of 45 minutes, so they ate very fast. Yeah, and the Empress would take uh, about two hours to do her hair. Every and, single day. And during that time she would use, uh, she would learn new, other languages and do other kind of just learning. And she would exercise as well, yeah. which, which everyone else in the court thought was strange. Yeah, they had like rings and a pull-up bar and stuff. Yeah. It's kind of funny. Yeah. And now we're going to go explore a tiny Christmas market in front of the Hofburg. It's called the KUK Weihnachtsmarkt. We got some blue vine vice. It's noon. <laughs> and it's only new. <laughs> We made it to the Amhof Christmas Market. Let's try to find some lunch. <laughs> I spent some money. <laughs> we uh, passed by an ornament booth and they were hand painted by the person who was running the booth and they were so cute, I couldn't say no. <laughs> We got the labor case left sandwich. Do you know what it is? Kind of like a ham type product. So like spam. Maybe spamish. <laughs> we'll see. It's very good. It's pretty basic. There's no toppings on it. Yeah. But 
the flavor is really good. It's not really like spam. It's more. It's closer to ham. It definitely has some extra like flavorings and stuff in it. Yeah. I'd say it's better than spam. Equal to ham, I guess, in terms of <laughs> quality and stuff. But I really like it. I think the lebekeza is like a combination of generally a couple different ground meats, and I think one of those includes bacon, like ground bacon, plus ground pork. But they grind it up, they make it into a loaf, and then they like bake it, I guess. And then they take it out, they slice it up, and so the edges have this nice little crispy bit. And then they warm it up and put it in a bun. I got the kezukreina, which is a grilled sausage with cheese. Cheese on the inside. Cheese on the inside. It's good. And mustard. Try it with mustard. Mm. Wow, that is so good. I love cheese. <laughs> I love sausage. Putting them together just makes common, it's common sense, right? Cheesy, warm, grilled, anything grilled. It's anything just... warm right now is good. Yes, <laughs> I'm very happy. You got the same thing I did, what do you think? It's really good. Yeah. yeah. If it gets good a seal of approval, that's, <laughs> that's a pretty big deal. <laughs> You're picky. And it comes with bread too. Bread's a little dry. <laughs> Apple punch. Very good. Well, we're just finishing up at the Amhof market, and there's another market close by, the Freyung, so I think we're gonna go check that one out. happening right now. <laughs> yeah, we figured it out. It was the Austrian president visiting the Christmas market. That's good time. Got some more ornaments. Oh, did I We're going to have a real delicate bag at the end of this trip. <laughs> did I spend some money? Yeah. Stopping by the Freyung market was a really good success. Yeah. Mm. It hit our pocketbook a little, <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun to explore and we had the perfect timing because we happened upon the president of Austria, which was quite surprising and they had a, a little band playing, there was a lot of fleas, but definitely not as many police as you'd think there would be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not from an American perspective anyway. We are at a somewhat unique building right now. It's a grocery store, but it used to be a bank, so it's super fancy. The architecture is gorgeous. I've never seen a grocery store like this. What did you find? Stuff. Yum! Made in Vienna. <laughs> yeah, some, some traditional Viennese stuff. Well, this is the fanciest grocery store. This is so fancy that the shopping cart attendants are wearing suits. Like, mind-blowing. I love it. Well, we made it to the Belvedere Palace, that's it right behind us. And it's just about sunset pretty soon. And there's a Christmas market in front of the palace. <laughs> so it's all lit up and beautiful with, with pretty sunset skies. And now we're gonna go head inside and check out the artwork in there. Let's go get our tickets. Yes. Stop it, come on, look at this view. We just bought our tickets to the Belvedere Palace. Uh, we got in right away, there's very little line, and we gotta go explore. But seriously, this view is incredible. Well, I 
think I know why people have a fear of clowns now. It's fruit. It's been a long day. <laughs> we wrapped up at the Belvedere Palace and we came to the Christmas market right outside. And I got a uh, heise chocolata, which is a hot chocolate mit schlag, which is cream. And I'm very excited. And the mug is super cute and it color changes. I love it. And we got a uh, Kaiser Schmarrn, which is like chopped up pancakes with apple. The apple is essentially, uh, yeah, it's essentially applesauce. Warm applesauce? No. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try it just plain. Look at that delicious thing. Mm. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. It's not like it's not like a buttermilk pancake. It's like a little bit denser, but like really tasty. Yeah, I like it. Better than Hungry Jack? <laughs> Certainly better than Hungry Jack. Yes. I like it better with apple. That's really good. And you can also get it with Nutella, and I think that'd be really good. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty nice market. Yeah, it is. Pretty atmospheric. Yeah. We finished up at the Belvedere Market and we hopped on the tram and came over two stops to the market at Carl's Platz. It's called the Art Advent Market and fun fact, every stall here was chosen by a committee and everything has to be handmade. How cool is that? That's pretty cool. What do you think? It's a very busy market. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I think maybe the busiest one we've been to so far. <laughs> it's very pretty. I like the lights. Yeah. Well, we decided that we were out here a little long and it's getting kind of cold, so we wanted to warm up. So we got some beer and punch. Did I say that right? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Beer and punch, and it's bio organic, so that's exciting. It's kind of lumpy punch. <laughs> That's good. I like it. What do you think? It's a little pulpy. Yeah. It's a little bit tart too. It's good though. Yeah. It's different than what we've had so far. Yeah. That's for sure. It's nice to try new things. Right. We got some more cage of speech though. Wow, look at that. A big portion. Big portion. <laughs> We're gonna share. That's very good. Yeah? Mm hmm. Yum, yum. It's nice and tender, soft, cheesy, punchy yeah. onions. Yeah. So good. Should we go? Yeah, I think we've had enough for tonight. Good morning from Vienna. We are currently on our way to Cafe Mozart for some breakfast. Inside. We got a table and we ordered some drinks and some food. We got our Mozart hot chocolates. It's got some, I don't know, pistachio cream or something like that on it. So we'll see how that is. This looks incredible. It's so fluffy with the whipped cream. <laughs> mm. This is one of the best I've had so far, I think. 
I love it. And it came with a Mozart ball. So my day is made right now. <laughs> so I got the eggs Hemingway, which is like an eggs Benedict with hollandaise sauce and I even got salmon on it. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good. Mm. So silky. <laughs> Very good. I got the Viennese breakfast, which is two different types of bread, some jam, soft boiled egg. Looks really good. <laughs> Ever wonder how they get fresh Christmas trees in a big city in Europe? The markets just pop up on the side of the street. Well, we just took the metro to the Schönbrunn Palace, the summer home of the Habsburgs. And it's not summer, but we're still gonna explore. <laughs> Because you like royalty? Yeah. Are you happy so far that we're here? Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, I have a fun fact about the floors. I just looked at them and I know something about them. If you look at the floors, they look like cobblestones, but they're not. They're made of wood. And that is because it helps reduce the noise of horses' hooves as they bring the carriages in. That's a pretty fun fact, huh? That's fun. Well, we just finished up the tour at the Schönbrunn Palace. It was about, I think it's about 50 minute tour. And it was an audio guide. It was included in our sissy ticket. Yep. Um, we got to skip the ticket lines, all that good stuff. So buy your ticket online in advance, get the sissy ticket, and you can just go right on in. A lot of similar information from the Hofburg yeah, Palace. Yeah, a lot of similar stuff. Diff slightly different scenery and stuff. So that's yeah, the rooms are nice. really cool to see. But you can't take any photos just like the other place, so. Yeah, there's a lot of rooms you can't take photos, <laughs> so something to be aware of if you come here. Still worth it though, come. Absolutely. Uh, there's a Christmas market behind us, which we're gonna check out, and then there's also supposed to be a garden on the other side of the palace, which is gonna have some pretty pretty views, uh, probably a little nicer in summer. Not much garden. Not much garden in winter, in winter but <laughs> we'll still check it out anyways. We spent some money. Um, I got a poster and some postcards and a magnet because the magnets are really cool. And uh, it's really cool artwork of the city of Vienna. Done, and we talked to the artist, and she was really cool. And her art had won awards and was hung up in museums. So that was really cool. What did you get? I got a tote bag. Show up. This is the print that I got as well. How cool is that? Cool. Yeah. So, spent some money. Gonna check out the market. It's a little cold, but not too bad. Let's see what we can find. Who would have thought we'd spend all of our money here? <laughs> you actually said we did the one. Yeah, to well, we need gifts somewhere. I guess so. <laughs> Got a baked potato with sour cream, ham, and cheese. Looks good. It looks so good. <laughs> How is it? Very creamy. Yeah. 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 Do, you, do you like it? Uh, yes. Almost too much cream. <laughs> so. Look at this. Look at this. <gasps> Look at that. That's good. Yum. I'm out of cash. We're almost out of cash. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That is so good. I mean, I wish the cream was warm. I wish the ham was warm. <laughs> I wish the cheese was warm. But the potato being warm makes up for it, and it is such a good combination together. When are we going back to the apartment? I need like an hour break. <laughs> what have you done? We bought a lot of stuff. <laughs> Turns out this market has a lot of really good products. Yeah, it's a good market. 
Well, I'm pretty impressed with the Schönbrunn Palace Market. There's a lot of really great uh, stalls here, a lot of handcrafted things, yeah. a lot of things made by the artists and they are the ones selling them. There's some decent food, but I don't think this market is known for its food. Yeah. Although we did find some pretty good baked potatoes. Yeah, the few things that are, that are here seem very good. Mm -hmm. so. Very cold, very windy. Very windy. We walked the long way around. <laughs> We're not sure if there's a way you can do it faster. We'll see when we exit, maybe. Yeah, it's quite cold. We're not going to be here much longer. No. <laughs> <laughs> this would be magnificent in summer. I could see us spending several hours here exploring. For sure. Yeah. Big. It is big. Yeah. Are you happy we came? Yeah. Did it live up to your expectations? Honestly, I might have liked the Hofburg a little bit better. Really? Why? I don't know, the history, the tour seemed better. We are uh, currently heading to St. Stephen's, St. Stephen's Cathedral. Cathedral. We're gonna go check it out. We chose to climb the South Tower of St. Stephen's Cathedral and it has, what, 300? 343 steps or something like that. It has 343 steps and it was about 550 per person to get in and here we go. It's tight. It's tight. <laughs> I mean like every like every church it's gonna be tight. <laughs> so here we go. Well we haven't made it to the top yet but one thing we know is that up and down share the same <laughs> tower spiral stairs access. So I can see this getting pretty congested <laughs> during peak tourist season. Well, we made it to the top of the stairs and at the top is a little gift shop. It's like an enclosed little room and they have all these windows that you can view the views out of. You can't go all the way to the top. That would be... We're about halfway or so. Yeah, we're about halfway up the tower. And it's really cool to see the tiled roof of the church behind us. It was destroyed after World War II, and then all the tiles were remade in Czechia, and they each weigh two kilos. We warmed up a little bit in our apartment and now it's time to hop back outside and it's chilly. I don't know, maybe we'll regret it, but we're gonna head to Spittleberg Market next. Well, we found some food bratwurst in a bun. It's got onions, mustard, possibly some curry powder. Looks really good. Smells really good. It's a lot of mustard. <laughs> but other than that, very good. Some fried potato. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Let's try this thing. Wow. It's a taste. Potato with garlic. <laughs> nice and crispy on the outside, kind of soft on the inside. Very fresh. You got one too? You like it? Well, we've been exploring the Spittleberg market for a little while and it's really fun. This market is different than other markets yeah. because it's not in a big open square. Its uh, stalls are lining the street and so you just walk down the street yeah. and it's a little more enclosed. And kind of a maze. Yeah, it's a little bit of a maze. It's really fun to explore. Well, we found some food to eat. Well, I should say more food. More food. We got a quesa crena 
And this is a common way that it's served. They actually take a full, like, crusty baguette thing, they slice off the top, and they hollow out the center, and then they, they put ketchup and mustard inside, and then they stuff the sausage in. It's interesting. It is interesting. <laughs> wow. That is so good. The cheese is so melty. The sausage is super, super tasty, perfectly grilled, kind of tastes like a kielbasa. It's incredible. <laughs> We are getting ready to go out again. We've spent some time warming up at our apartment and now we're going to a Christmas concert at Stevens Dome. We're very excited. It is with the Vienna Symphony Orchestra and the Vienna Boys Choir. These two groups are world renowned for their music and I just, <laughs> I'm super looking forward to it. Yeah. I can't wait. Should be good. Yeah. We bought our tickets for the concert a couple weeks in advance. The best seats were already sold out, so we sat in the very back row. We had a horrible view, but the concert itself was amazing. If we did it again, we'd either choose to pay less and sit on the side, or pay more and have a better view up front. Well, we have one last stop for the night. The uh, Christ Kindlemarkt at the Rathausplatz City Hall. Save the best for last, or at least the biggest and most impressive light yeah. displays for yeah. last. A lot of lights. Yeah, it's pretty big. Let's go check it out. Yeah. I have a fun fact. I don't know if I've said it already. Snow globes were invented in Vienna. Ah, and there is a snow globe booth right over there. <laughs> I got a punch. I got a Mars pun punch, and it comes mit schlag, just cream, and Greta roll her eyes. And you could also get a salted caramel one that also comes with cream. And we also know that the apple one is very good. I don't know how I'm gonna drink this without getting cream everywhere. <laughs> That's very good. Alcohol. Does it taste like Mars Pond? It has like an undertone of Mars Pond. I can't tell other flavors. It's also very hot. And I think the cream is like insulating the heat, not letting any of it escape. But look at this mug. It's color changing. This was black before they put the hot liquid in it. And then it changed into the into the town hall. That is so cool. Well, this was a pretty fun market. I think it helped that we came on a weekday, so it wasn't overly crowded. Yeah. And we came later in the night, like at 8 p.m. or so. So it wasn't super busy with people hanging out after work or anything. <laughs> I'd say it's a little bit overpriced compared to some of the other markets we visited. And there's a lot of the same stalls and the same foods, but it's really fun to walk around and see all the lights. Yeah, and a lot of cool light displays. Yeah, it's got some great ambiance here, and it'd be really fun if you had time to skate in the park, too. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we're going to call it a night. Good morning from Vienna. It is before sunrise. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Nice and early. Um, we are getting ready to go to the train station to go to a new country. And I think this one is significant because I think, Jeremy, I think this is your 20th country. Ooh. Ah. <laughs> That's exciting. It is exciting. So we're going to take the train to Slovakia today. We're specifically going to Bratislava. It's, it's only an hour train ride away from Vienna and it's a very small, cute capital city that I think we should be able to explore in a day. So let's go. We'll see you there. Yeah. Well, we had a pretty nice train ride to Bratislava and now we're taking about a 20 minute walk to get to the center. 
or if we can find a tram stop, we might take the number one tram. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. We are currently heading to St. Michael's Gate in the Old Town. St. Michael's Gate behind me is part of the former town wall and it's super old and you can walk under it and as you walk under it you can see point zero which is originally what all measure like all distances in Slovakia were measured from I guess <laughs> that's kind of cool yeah So cute! What'd you find? I found Helvesti Namesti, <laughs> Old Town Square, Christmas Market. Super cute. Oh, I love it. Did you know that Bratislava used to be called Pressburg and this used to be the capital of Hungary when Budo was taken over by the Ottoman Turks? So they also, you can see the lights, the lights of Vienna from uh, Bratislava and vice versa because they are that close together. How cool is that? <laughs> what do you guys think so far? It's pretty. It's cute. Yeah? Greta wants coffee. We should probably find some. <laughs> I'm very hungry. Well, we just ate at uh, Cafe Mayer. We had what we thought was hot chocolate, but when we ordered it, it was for eating. <laughs> we weren't really sure what that meant. And then it's basically we, very thick milk and chocolate. Well, yeah, then we got the hot chocolate, and it was literally like <coughs> melted chocolate that was served with whipped cream that you have to mix in. So you essentially make your own chocolate mousse. It was delicious but it's not for drinking like she said yeah. it was definitely for eating yeah. and that that makes sense now we also got some uh, pastries those were those were pretty good those were pretty good some traditional pastries one with poppy seeds and one with uh, one with walnuts they were pretty good yeah I'm not the biggest fan of nuts <laughs> but it was okay overall it was a good experience cafe was cool build us up filled us up and now we are going to go explore. In the weeks leading up to Christmas, there's a big Christmas market in the main square of the Old Town. There are a lot of stalls and it's really fun to wander around. We saw lots of stalls selling hot drinks and mulled wine or punch. And this is a great place to get fun handmade souvenirs we ended up getting a few things to take home with us. And of course, there were a lot of delicious looking foods to try. We got some laksha. What's good? It looks kind of like lefsa. Yeah. We got two flavors. This one is is a pulled duck meat, and the other one that we got is smoked cheese. So let's give it a try. And they were uh, seven euros for the two of them. So that's a really good deal. Yeah. Okay. Mm. That was like a bite of nothing, and already it was good. <laughs> Just bread. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it looks thicker than mine. Mm. That is so good. It's ridiculous. So like warm and shredded. It's shredded duck. So savory. Just melt in your mouth. Tender. Super juicy. 
absolutely delicious. This is what the guy recommended. He said it was most popular right now, so really, definitely get this. Okay, this is the smoked cheese loksha. Let's try this one. Oh, it's very good. Very uh, creamy cheese. It almost tastes like gouda a little bit. Mildly smoked. It's not a strong smoke flavor. You can see inside it's pretty well filled. All the foods and all the stands looks amazing. And it's hard to chew. Yeah. just inside a courtyard steps away from the old town square and it is so quiet and peaceful here and it's just so beautiful look at this architecture let's keep exploring We're in Primate Square, and the pink building behind me is the new town hall, and it was formerly the Archbishop's residence, and it's beautiful. Bratislava is a compact city, and it's very walkable. It's easy to explore in just a few hours, making it a great day trip from Vienna. The architecture of the city really tells the story of its history, with buildings from every era mixed together in a beautiful collection. We think it's interesting to see the juxtaposition of a building from the Habsburg Empire next to the brutalist architecture of the mid-1900s, and together these buildings reveal Slovakia's long history. We made a little detour from the Old Town Square to check out this beautiful 1913 Art Nouveau church. It's really pretty, very pastel blue, and it was designed by a Hungarian architect. It's very cool. Found the Slovak National Theater. Yeah. It's even got another Christmas market next to it. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Hi from Bratislava. <laughs> the Slovak National Theater opened in 1880. At the time, there was heavy influence from the Austro Hungarian Empire, so half of the performances were in German and half were in Hungarian. These days, the official language is Slovak. Behind me is the SNP bridge and it was built during the time of communism. It kind of looks like a UFO. We're on the top of the UFO tower. And it's 95 meters tall. And it was built in 1972. On a clear day, you'd have a great view all like all around you. You would see Austria in that direction, Slovakia this way, and on either side you might see some other countries like Hungary yeah. <laughs> or <laughs> something else. Something. You can see something from up here. It's a little foggy today, so we can't see a whole lot, but it is cool. the river, probably going to try and find some food and a place to get warm. Now we're at the Holocaust Memorial, which is at the site of the original Bratislava Synagogue. And it has a black wall with an etching of the original synagogue, as well as a statue with the word remember in both Slovak and Hebrew. 
to remember the 90,000 Slovak Jews who were deported to uh, Nazi death camps and of which 80,000 died. Bratislava has always been a cultural melting pot in Central Europe. The Austrian Empire brought Germans to the region, and when the Ottoman Empire pushed out people of Budapest, they retreated to Bratislava. People of different cultures and religious views were able to live harmoniously together. The city's main synagogue was right next to the main church. Bratislava has a long, sometimes dark history, but it's now a thriving city on the Danube and a great place to explore. We're going to find some food now, but what do you think of uh, Bratislava? Pretty nice. Yeah, I could spend a whole weekend here. <laughs> <laughs> There's lots to do. The architecture is really cool. The food is really interesting. There's a lot of history. We came to a restaurant for some dinner, and for drinks, I got a kofola, which is supposed to be similar to a Coca-Cola. Yeah. It's their version that they had created when they were under communist rule. It's not quite a Coke. <laughs> it's a... Uh, it's got a bit of an herbaly flavor to it. Kind of like a coffee dye. It's still good though. It's got a draft beer. Mm. Or peener, I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> it's good light beer. Mm. Nazdravi. Nazdravi. Well, the food came and I got a mixed plate. It has, I think, sauerkraut gnocchi with sausage and green onions. And this is cheesy, pierogies with bacon and chives and cream and then we have potato gnocchi with cheese bacon and chives oh man look at that that looks so good oh my gosh that is so good the bacon is super crispy fluffy cheesy just a hint of chive and it just melts in your mouth instantly. That is incredible. I got some potato pancakes with uh, shredded pork, cabbage, and uh, some horseradish. It's pretty good. Nice crispy, crispy on the outside, soft on the inside. Potato pancakes. Mm, that's just what you want. Meat's pretty tender. Cabbage adds a nice little kind of freshness to it. Mm. Very good. We just wrapped up dinner at Kobila Kamzik. It was very good. If you come, absolutely get the pierogi. That is the best thing that we had. <laughs> and then I think the second best thing was those potato pancakes. Yeah, for sure. And now we are going to head to the train station. Let's go. We're waiting for our platform to be assigned to the train. Ah. <laughs> Everybody's waiting. It was actually really easy to go to Bratislava as a day trip from Vienna. We just got these. We got tickets at the Vienna train station for 16 euros a piece. It's just called the Bratislava ticket or Bratislava pass, I don't know. 16 euros a piece includes round trip transfer between Vienna and Bratislava and an all day transit pass when you are in Bratislava. So it makes it getting around super easy. You can buy this ticket on the OBB app or you can buy it at the station. Either way, you have to print your ticket at the station even if you get it in the app. Yeah, so we made it back to the apartment, but we just wanted to wrap up the night. Well, that's about it for us tonight. So we're headed for our next destination of Prague. It looks like Prague just got a ton of snow, so we're slipping and sliding on the cobblestone. Yeah. And we either need to take a metro to our Airbnb or we need to walk. Either way, it seems like it's going to be chaos. Yeah. <laughs> 
for sure. Either a lot of people or a lot of snowy uh, sidewalks. Welcome to our Airbnb in Prague. Got a bedroom right here, right off the entrance. Got about a queen size bed it looks like. It's even got its own patio. A little dark right now, so we'll have to check that out another time. <laughs> Little hallway to a bathroom with a shower. And then a second bedroom. Back down the hallway to the other side. What is a lot this? of bags. <laughs> Got a bathroom with just a toilet and a sink. And the main living space. Got a dining room table right here. Got a couch with a Greta. <laughs> and a pretty sizable kitchen over here. So the Greta comes with the apartment. Yeah, yeah. yes. <laughs> and some slanty windows, which, again, it's dark. We can't see. Just snowed in Prague. Looks pretty nice. We are in Prague, and tonight we're going to the National Theater to see the opera. The Bartered Bride. Yeah. Behind us is the National Theater and it's snowing and it's really pretty out but it's very cold. So let's get in and warm up and find our seats for the opera. <laughs> we booked our tickets for the opera months in advance and they were already starting to sell out for performances around the holidays. We chose box seats and had a great experience. If you plan to do the same, we only recommend buying tickets in a box if you have a front row seat. The views from the second row of the box are pretty obstructed. While we found our seats, we have a box on the first balcony and it's pretty nice. I think it seats four, so we might have someone join us. We have a random person. Yeah, we'll see. The first row is a row of three and it has the best views. Also, these tickets were only $56, so super affordable. And the architecture in here is so beautiful. I'd say this opera house is definitely better than the architecture of the Vienna Opera. <laughs> we dressed up for the occasion and we're glad we did because everyone else also dressed up for the event. And if you book box seats, no need to check your coat. There are coat hooks inside the box for you. Well, just like in Vienna, we reserved a table for intermission for drinks and food. Uh, unlike Vienna, though, there are two intermissions this time, and you can reserve for both. We only did it for one, though. So. <laughs> Have you noticed anything about the boxes? We have this nice padding here. Oh yeah? What do you do with it? <laughs> Lean over and check out the view, huh? Yeah. first Mission Impossible movie was filmed in Prague and, and especially part of it was on this bridge. Oh Ethan, I'm shot. <laughs> <laughs> While well, we're back from the opera, that was a pretty cool experience. Yeah, it was really good. It's a Czech opera. It's also a modern twist on the opera. That was really cool. Yeah. They had like acrobatics and <laughs> trampolines in yeah. there. It was a really interesting interpretation. I thought that was really cool. Mm -hmm. Not having any experience with operas and <laughs> things like that, I thought this was I thought this was a fun way to wrap up our time today. Yeah, it was a long day with the travel and everything. It was really long. Well, good morning from Prague. This is gonna be our first full day in Prague. It's very exciting. We got up bright and early at the crack of sunrise. 8 a.m. 8 a.m. 8 a.m. That's when sunrise was. Um, we are going to find a bakery to get some breakfast, and then we are going to head to Prague Castle as our first stop of the day. Let's get to it. Yeah, let's go. This is so cool. We just made it to the old town square and behind me is a beautiful church. Sorry, look at all the birds. <laughs> you don't like birds? Oh. 
just move. No. I got a collage for breakfast. Not quite sure the flavor, but it looked really good. I think it's like a vanilla sort of flavor. I like it. Definitely come and get a collage. Behind me is Prague's Old Town Hall and it has the astronomical clock on it, which you can see. And the original part is the top dial. It tells the time in Roman numerals on the outside in 24 hour increments. So the dial just goes once around for the day, not twice around like a regular standard clock that you have on your, on your wall. Um, it tells the time. It tells you what zodiac sign it is for the month. It tells you what sun sign it is for the day. It tells you what saint day it is. It tells you how much daylight there is. It does a lot of things. And on top of the hour, you'll see a little glockenspiel show happen where the apostles pass by and uh, the little skeleton up there is death <laughs> and it rings its bell, reminding everyone that your time is fleeting. <laughs> We're heading towards the Charles Bridge and the Prague Castle now. The snow is super pretty. It really feels like like Christmas time. I just love it. Oh, that was a dip. <laughs> no, I know, but it just really makes it like really atmospheric and magical. <laughs> I don't know. Winter in Europe, you just expect snow, and we didn't have a whole lot of snow in Vienna. And I don't think we really had any in Budapest either. Yeah. So this just feels really nice. I got a snowflake in my eye. That's also <laughs> nice. Yeah. It just feels really nice and uh, I love it. But it does make it hard to walk. <laughs> it's very slippery up. We're walking on the Charles Bridge and it's not too busy. We're kind of early. It's like, what, 9.30? 9.30. Yeah, around 9.30, but it's winter. So like, I imagine this is probably packed by 9.30 <laughs> in the summer. Um, snowing, magical. Facts about the Charles Bridge. It was built in 1342 by King Charles IV. <laughs> and he ruled Prague during Prague's golden age. He created this bridge across the river, the Vltava River, and it, for a very long time, it was the only bridge across the river, like for centuries. <laughs> and he also created Prague's university, and he even started the Prague Castle, which is behind me. The Prague Bridge is about seven football fields long, so that's pretty long. <laughs> getting a nice view of all the architecture. It's so pretty. We've come to the spot on the Charles Bridge that marks where St. John of Nepomuk, the patron saint of Czech people, was supposedly tossed off the bridge for his apparent crimes. <laughs> but when he fell into the water, a ring of five stars appeared around his head, proving that he was innocent. And then he's sainted. And if you touch him, touch the stars, it is believed that a wish of yours will come true. Sorry. <laughs> Jeremy, what? you didn't make a wish. I touched it. Did you make a wish? Yeah. The John Lennon Wall first appeared in 1980 after John Lennon's murder. And it, since then, it's been a place for people to put up signs of peace and protest. Are you happy now? What did we do? We got Starbucks and sat in warmth for a little while. Well, we said we were going to Prague Castle, but it seems like we've made a lot of other stuff before that. <laughs> <laughs>
change of plans. Things are taking a lot longer. I think we are very exhausted. It's the end of our, it's near the end of our trip. And there's already a lot of tourists, so there's not really a point in trying to get there early because it's no longer early. Instead of going to Prague Castle first thing, we are now going to Strahov Library at the Strahov Monastery. And we're going to look at a pretty library from far away because you're not actually allowed to enter the library unless you have a tour. And I tried to contact them like a month ago and they never responded. So I guess we're just looking at it from a distance. Strahov Library is one of the oldest and best preserved libraries in the world. It's got two libraries, one dedicated to philosophy and the other to theology. Behind me is the Theological Hall. It's magnificent. The library was built in the 1670s and in this room it houses some really impressive old globes and if you look at the back wall there, there's like a box in the wall where they would keep forbidden texts. There's also some interesting displays in the hallway, like some old uh, rocks, which I like rocks, so I find it exciting. But there's also a static electricity machine that's from the 1800s? <laughs> it's from the late 1700s. I'm pretty happy. I like books. <laughs> I, I'd make a detour to see that any day. The monastery library is open from 9 to noon or 1 to 5. So if you come at that sweet spot from noon to 1, you're out of luck because it's closed. We finally made it to Prague Castle and this place is pretty cool. That's the cathedral behind me, and it is gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> and Greta's running to keep warm. <laughs> is pretty incredible. It started being built in the 1300s and it was completed in the 1900s for the 1000th anniversary of St. Wenceslas' death. <laughs> Great. So it took, it took a very long time to build. In between when it started and when it finished there were wars, plagues, all the terrible things. All the bad things. All the bad things that would maybe prevent you from finishing something like this. <laughs> but this is, I think, Pretty incredible. Yeah. The part of the church that's behind me was completed in the 1920s, which is why a lot of the stained glass has a very modern flair to it, and it is stunning. This stained glass window behind me was designed by Alphonse Mucha in 1931. It's famous for its Art Nouveau style. A fun fact about the church is that the architect who designed this church is the same one that designed the Charles Bridge, Peter Parler. I almost said, no, I almost said Peter Parker, so not to be confused. Why do we visit so many churches on our trips? It's because we like to see the art in situ. So like, you get to see the artwork in the location that it was designed for. So that's pretty cool. And there's a lot of cool art, especially the stained glass windows in this church. Behind me is the tomb of King Wenceslas. You're just happy about it. <laughs> Go ahead. Good King Wenceslas looked out on the people <coughs> In the chapel behind me is where they used to crown the Czech kings, and it's also where they store the crown jewels. We're in the old royal palace and this is Vladislav Hall. It's 200 feet long and it's big enough to hold a joust in here. And there's a staircase on the other end that was even designed to allow a mounted soldier to enter through. In 1618, 
angry Czech nobles threw two governors out these windows. <laughs> they did not die, but they did get some broken limbs and some bruised egos. On the wall behind me are portraits of Habsburg rulers, including Maria Theresa and Joseph II, and he happens to be dressed up as George Washington, of all things. Isn't that funny? It's really good. Was it worth it? Mm-hmm. Nice grill flavor. It looks like it's kind of got some paprika maybe seasoning. Got some pepper, yellow pepper, red onion it looks like. Maybe some yellow onion as well. Unless that's, is that ham? Or like bacon or something? Now we're in the Golden Lane, which is another part of the Prague Castle circuit ticket. And it includes houses of, of soldiers and craftsmen, including the author Kafka. They must have been very short because these houses are tiny. <laughs> yeah, you have to watch your head. The doorways are very short. These days it has a bunch of little shops you can hop into and spend all the money. <laughs> well, what just happened? we bought a lot more than we thought we were going in to buy. So. Oh, yeah. More than a postcard? <laughs> we got sold. <laughs> we got a book that Kafka wrote in this house. He wrote a bunch of short stories and he wrote 14 of them from this house. So that's really cool. Yeah. And we also got a, a traditional Czech cookbook. Yeah, we got talked into it. The pictures looked incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Golden Lane is fun. It's a bit, it's definitely a lot touristy. <laughs> um, very busy and crowded and easy to spend a lot of money. Yeah. I think we should go before we spend anything else. How's it going? We're slipping inside. <laughs> going slow. It's just pure chaos. It's pure chaos. That is a very tall guy. <laughs> we just saw um, the gas lighter lighting the lights at the Charles Bridge. It's the only bridge in the world that's still lit by gaslight, and they only light them like this during Advent. So that was really cool to see. And chaotic because of all the Very people. chaotic. Well, we've come to Upi Vrinza for dinner, an early dinner, because we didn't really have lunch. And this place is really cool. There's cartoons on the walls, and it's actually designed by the artist who made this cartoon famous in Czechia. And I've got a Mirinda with me. I think it's some sort of orange pop. It's super good. And Jeremy and Greta both got beers. Well, our food came, and I got the svičkova, which is like beef tenderloin in a root vegetable sauce, and it comes with whipped cream and cranberries and bread dumplings. So I'm gonna dig in. Oh wow, that's super tender. Just try it plain first. That's really good. Try it with a little bit of everything. Whipped cream is an interesting choice, but the berries and whipped cream really add to this dish. That is delicious. Also, the bread dumplings, 
are meant to be eaten by soaking up the sauce like this. Oh, look at that gloriousness. Mm. Okay, I got the roasted duck, which has got gravy and some red cabbage and some bread dumplings. Mm. I could die. It's like Thanksgiving with all the gravy and the cabbage adds a little bit of kind of like, I don't know, sourness to it. It's so good. Dinner was really tasty. Yeah. Everything we got was traditional Czech dishes and I think we all loved everything we had. Yeah, it seemed like more of a local's place than a touristy restaurant, so. The staff there was super friendly. Um, even though we were stupid tourists <laughs> and didn't know how yeah. to use the credit card machine. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> they were super friendly, so if you get a chance, if you're in Prague, definitely stop by the restaurant. Um, then we came back here for a little rest because it's been a long day. Yeah. <laughs> and we could easily just stay here, I think, the rest of the night. but We really could, but we're forcing ourselves to get out because Prague has some Christmas markets right now and we kind of want to check them out. <laughs> yeah, and it's only about 7.30. So. Yeah, it's not even late, and we've already been relaxing for like two hours. <laughs> Something <in the> like <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you skip lunch and have an early dinner. <laughs> and when sunset is at 4 p.m. Yeah, true. <laughs> Everything feels later than it truly is. Yeah. So we're going to head out now and check out some Christmas markets. Probably the one at the Old Town Square, because that's like right around the corner from where we're staying. Yep. Yeah. Let's yeah. go do it. Let's go. <laughs> it's so pretty! And Greta's relying on me to take pictures. But it's so pretty! I don't, I don't have a camera. It, okay, I, I had to put on cold wet shoes, but this was worth it. <laughs> Oh, well, we got some mead. Ooh. <laughs> it's uh, almond flavored, honey, honey wine. Oh yeah? Yeah. Looks hot. Yeah, it does. <laughs> That's a very tiny cup you got there. Well, it's strong probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, so. Glad you didn't get the big cup. That's both hot and strong. <laughs> <laughs> so it hits you. Bam! In both points. Yeah. For your sinuses. <laughs> yeah. That's a strong drink. There's you don't want to drink too much of that. Oh yeah. <laughs> we'll be sharing. <laughs> <laughs> no. We got roasted chestnuts. Have you ever had a roasted chestnut? No. We'll see how this goes. You got to peel them. <laughs> How do you know you've got to peel it? I'm not eating the shell. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be cool. tedious and it's going to take a while. It's a good thing we got Greta here to hold the bag. <laughs> Ooh, that's steamy. Wow. That's steamy. It looks like it'd be soft. Is it soft? Oh man, look at that. There you go. That's chestnut. How hot is this going to be? Yeah, I say eat it. Looks like a potato. Yeah. Like a potato. I'm scared. Is it hot, hot? Warm? No. Yeah, it's warm. It doesn't have a whole lot of flavor. Do you like it? Tastes like a nut. I don't know. <laughs> a it's warm not like nut? A, not like a peanut, just like kind of like a, I don't know, more like a walnut almost. Ah. Do you like it? Would you buy it again? I probably wouldn't buy it again. Yeah. But it's fine. It's an experience. It's traditional. It is an experience, isn't it? <laughs> and you're warming your hands. <laughs> Would you like to try? I guess I should try. I don't know, this seems a little sus. <laughs> Almost dropped it. <laughs> it just tastes like a mushy nut. What's wrong with a mushy nut? I don't know. I don't really have words to describe it. It's very 
bland. It's just very bland and mushy. It's very bland and mushy, but also it's got like that texture. And so because it has not a whole lot of flavor, it's just more of a texture thing. It's not for me. Not fam. Well, it's been a long day. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're pretty exhausted. If there's one thing to say about Prague, it's chaotic. <laughs> Very much. It's like the Minnesota State Fair. Yeah. There's just so many tourists. It's definitely the most Americans that we've seen so far on this trip to Europe. It was a good way to end our night in Prague, and we have one more day in Prague before we fly back home. Good morning, everyone. It's our last day in Prague. We forgot to mention that Czech Republic is Karin's 20th country. Woohoo! <laughs> and today we're going to be starting out with a tour of the Jewish Quarter. Let's go! Right now we're in the Maisel Synagogue, which was built in the late 16th century after the Habsburg King reduced restrictions on Jews in Prague. Inside the synagogue, it has a lot of really good information about uh, the Jewish community in Prague throughout the, the centuries. During World War II, this synagogue was used to house Jewish artifacts and catalog them as ordered by the Nazis. Well, it was a very interesting and informative visit at the Maisel Synagogue. Now we're going to head to the Pincus Synagogue. The walls of the Pincus Synagogue are inscribed with the names of over 77,000 Czech Jews who were deported and died at Nazi concentration camps during World War II. If you go up the stairs of the Pincus Synagogue, there is a gallery of children's artwork that was made while they were at the Terezin Nazi camp. The artwork showed a lot of different types of scenes like life at the camp, life from before when things were better, and images of hope for a better future. It was very powerful. Right now, we're in the old Jewish cemetery in Prague, and there are about 80,000 people buried here. There's about 12,000 headstones, and for 80,000 people, that means that some of them are buried as many as eight deep. And that's because this is the only place where Jewish people were allowed to be buried in Prague. Much of Eastern Europe was destroyed during World War II, especially areas with a high Jewish population. The Nazis made a point to preserve the Jewish quarter of Prague because they intended to use it as a museum once they completed their plans of eliminating all Jews. There is a lot of information to be learned by visiting the area and it can be a lot to take in. We believe it's important to learn about history so that the mistakes of the past won't be repeated in the future. We're in the Old New Synagogue, which was built in 1270. It's the oldest synagogue in Eastern Europe. up our time touring the Jewish Quarter at the Spanish Synagogue and the architecture is really impressive yeah so is the interior we thought this tour was well worth our time we would definitely recommend it yeah absolutely we learned a lot of history and if nothing else come for the architecture because it's really stunning there's a lot of good information at all of the stops we went to a lot of great uh, plaques and informative signs. There's also a very informative audio guide too. Yeah. So we highly recommend if you come to Prague to stop by the Jewish Quarter. What'd you get? Got some Prague ham and kielbasa. Oh my gosh, yeah. it looks so good. Wow, that looks good. Looks good. Oh man. Mm -hmm. the, the casing is just super like thin and crisp and like super tender meat on the inside. So flavorful. Probably paprika. It's all it's really red, so I would imagine that. But that's maybe some of the best sausages I've ever had. So definitely recommend. <laughs> I've got some delicious prog ham. It's been roasting on a spit over an open fire. It looks insane. It smells delicious and it's pull apart tender. Look at this bite. <laughs> that looks good. Yeah, it does. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that 
That is so good. Oh my gosh, so flavorful. Perfectly tender, it's got that char from like the fire and it's crispy with like a little bit of burntness to it. Oh my gosh, it just, it melts in your mouth. Super juicy, super tender. Oh, if you come to Prague for Christmas markets, get the ham. This is like, this is incredible. <laughs> I got hot chocolate. It's super cold out. It's like the coldest day we've experienced on this trip. I don't know what the actual temperature is, but 20 degrees. It feels pretty cold. My feet are freezing, but I've got hot chocolate and it's warming my hands and it's making me happy. That's some good stuff. <laughs> Oh, we had fun getting a little lunch from the Christmas market. Yeah, it was a little cold out, but the food was nice and hot. Um, our last stop was picking up gingerbread. <laughs> it was so, we had it the other night, and it was so good that we had to come back for a little more. <laughs> if you are in Prague, get the marzipan and the lotus flavors. Those are delicious. <laughs> and now we're heading to the Mucha Museum to see artwork by Alphonse Mucha. Well, the Mucha Museum was really fun. It was cool to see the Art Nouveau style of art. Um, and then after that, we went over to the post office to try to get some stamps for all of our postcards. Uh, it was kind of rough. <laughs> the guy was help that was helping me did not speak much English. You gotta make sure when you're asking for stamps to say that they're for postcards. That usually helps a little bit. And then the destination they're going to, initially he thought I was asking for stamps to Europe, and uh, I had to make sure I said for the USA. <laughs> Um, so, but it took probably about a good five minutes to get the whole process figured out. Uh, stamps aren't super cheap, but uh, we got 19 of them, so <laughs> that was kind of a lot. Yeah. And now we're walking through Wenceslas Square towards the Old, old Town Hall. Uh, we're going to try to climb that before it gets dark. Oh, we stumbled upon a Christmas market and we got some mini pancakes with salted caramel topping. <laughs> Looks pretty good. Wow. A lot of caramel. <laughs> mm. That was very good. Very salty. Mm-hmm. Very salted caramel. Very fresh pancakes. Nice and fluffy. Very pillowy. So good. Let's make a We're climbing up the tower at Old Town Hall to see the view, and it's gotta be good. Look at that. Well, this was a great view of Prague. Yeah. Definitely come during sunset if you have the option. Uh, it gets very busy up here, so be prepared for a tight squeeze. <laughs> we had a great time in Prague. This is the last thing we're really going to do. That pretty much wraps up our trip. Tomorrow we head back home. Mm -hmm. And then we'll see you in the next one. <laughs> well, we're off on <laughs> Go for it. Well, we're off on our next adventure. We're on our What are you most excited for? Um, our German tour of the Parliament. <laughs> Do you speak German? <laughs> no. <laughs> but we're taking a German tour. Yeah.
<laughs> That'll be interesting. <laughs> this far down into it, you don't realize that there's cheese. <laughs> it takes a while. <laughs> this is a first take. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> I don't know. You're warming your fingers. Oh, it is actually really warm. <laughs> You know, it kind of reminds me of like a fruit by the foot. <laughs> <laughs> it goes on and on. A cinnamon roll by the foot, huh? If I had planned this trip, we would be staying at the Ritz. <laughs> yeah. If you had planned this trip, we would have no budget for any future trips. <laughs> I'm gonna ruin all your things with my stuff. That's so rude. Is it upside down? No, I don't think so. How much did we pay to get inside the church? That's a good question. <laughs> Woo! Where are you at? Budapest! <laughs> There's like a kind of a cool building behind us. Wait for the cars. Yeah. One more. One, not that one. One more car. <laughs> We got these guys with some really buff legs. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and just in case you were worried, that is not a UFO, it's a water tower. I don't know. I have no idea. I know nothing. <laughs> it's Steven. And tomorrow we're heading to Vienna. <laughs> And tomorrow we're heading to Vienna. Sorry. <laughs> you butt. <laughs> okay. Okay, I think we're good. <laughs> Ooh, there's a step. Yeah, there's a step. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I'm gonna leave. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a video? <laughs> Are you taking a video? <laughs> and it's a pretty large area. <laughs> and, <laughs> and there's statues. What do you think? I think I need a bigger coat. And then a lot of people stop behind you and are watching. So I'm gonna... People are watching. Well, we came, well, we fit, we were black. I couldn't find you because I thought you were at the benches that are just below this oh. ramp. And then I was like, oh no. Um, it's, the jam is so red, it looks like blood. You look a little messy. Well, <laughs> I like the juxtaposition. I'm cars. It's pretty true. <laughs> Greta's making a mess. Yeah. <laughs> yes? I can't skate. You can too. You can't? Not initially. I'll probably have a struggling period. <laughs> a struggling period. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Great. Going. Going. Okay. It's only a trip. It's only a yeah. There's loud things happening. A hot cocoa. <laughs> I could go for a hot cocoa. <laughs> I mean a... A ho -cho. No. You're not allowed to call it that. <laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm cold. I'm shivery. <laughs> We're both walking. You have to move your body. <laughs> this is like good quality stuff here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm turning on the heat to maximum, and then I'm gonna sit in front of it and bundle up in front of a blanket and just sit there. And I'm gonna be warm. Yes, but I will put my hands on it. <laughs> I don't care if I get burns. I'm gonna be warm. <laughs> It'll be fine. What's going on here? 
believe it or not, Greta asked me to hug her. And then she said, this is nice. <laughs> Can you see this? No, they're not in video. Okay. We're on top of the UFO tower. It's 95 feet tall. Meters. Okay. <laughs> you can see. At only 90 feet high. 90 95 feet high. Meters. I know, I'm joking. So we're going to find some food now. Are you going to say anything more than that? Yes. Nazdra. Nazdra. Oh, my finger was in the yeah, way. Yeah, get your finger out of the way. Behind us is the National, what is it, theater? Have you found anything out about the, uh... <laughs> Biggest viral. <laughs> well, good morning. <laughs> Behind me is Prague's Old Town Hall, and it has. And we're going to look at pretty. Greta's butt is cold. That is a fact. <laughs> Straight from her mouth. <laughs> um, <laughs> and? We're walking on the Charles. <laughs> <laughs> We're walking down the Charles Bridge right now, and it's not too busy right now. Right now. Right, right now. now. Right now. Now is the word of yeah, the minute. Yeah, I guess. The minute. Get moving. Get moving. Get moving. That wasn't the plan. <laughs> this stained glass window behind me was designed by Alphonse Lu Luca. Oh my gosh, you're very close. It's fine. Okay. In the chapel there, that's where um, they used to crown the kings of the land. <laughs> the land. <laughs> okay. Greta's holding my hand. <laughs> what are you doing? A McRoyale. McRoyale. McRoyale double. Big tasty. 